Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. Just, just, just take a moment and just think how good God really is. Yes. Amen. Yes. You can't think of it enough in just a moment, but God is so beyond us. Yeah. All the time. He said all the time. And the times that he's had his hand upon us, the times that he's kept us when we didn't even know. I believe that's the reason David said, the Lord is my shepherd. David himself, being a shepherd over sheep, knew what that staff was. He knew. And back then, they either had a hook in it or it was just a straight rod that they would herd the cattle with or the sheep keep them from being astray so David said the Lord is my shepherd the big question tonight is is he our shepherd amen and the Lord said he's the shepherd amen and then David said, the Lord is. He's the one that leads me and guides me. He's the one that directs me. He's the one that keeps me and watches over me and protects me. And I understand that we, we all go through difficulties and we're going through problems and we're going through situations, but God is still on the scene. God is not changing, church. We're the ones changed. If anybody strays, it's not God. It's us. Amen? So that's the reason in these last days, in these last moments, in this last time that we have and the moments that we have here on earth is that we need to stay so close to God that we trip over Him every time we take a step. Amen? Just... What, what does the word say in Psalms 91? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. Amen? Find that if you can, Tyler. Psalms 91, verse 1. I want, just look at your neighbor and say, there's a closeness that we need with God. We have close friends. Amen. We have close relatives. On my side of the family, we only claim to the third cousin, and after that, nobody, we, you know my cousin. And my grandson, Grayson, said they were at his mama's family, and she said, well, this is your cousin. He said, that's your cousin. He ain't my cousin. <laughs> But we have people that we're close to. Amen. Amen. And people that we're close to sometimes will let you down. Amen. They will disappoint you. Amen. They will discourage you. Amen. But God will never, ever let us down. Amen. You can count on him. There's no variable in this of him turning. In other words, there's no shadow of him turning. There's no very rate variation in God. He's not about to change because he says in Malachi 3, I believe it is, he says, For I am the Lord. I change not. There's no changing with God. God is steadfast, and we must be steadfast. If it's ever been a time in our spiritual life, church, we need to be steadfast, unmovable, yeah. always abounding in the work of the Lord. Yes. Amen? Amen? We need to be progressing. We need to be, we need to be moving forward. Come on, somebody. We, we get stuck in ruts. We get stuck in situations. We get stuck in problems. We get stuck with family problems. We get stuck here and there. But God is a big God, and he can take it all. He can handle it all. If we'll just give it to him and get close to him. What did he say? Draw not to God. 
Resist the devil and he'll flee. I used to preach that. I did preach all of the scripture until one time the Lord just said, what about the front part? I said, what's that? He said, draw nigh to me and then you can resist the devil. Amen. We can't resist anything on our own. We've got to have God. Somebody shout, I've got to have God. I can't get up in the morning without God. I don't even want to, I don't want to even think about getting up tomorrow and not knowing that God is going to be there, church. Yeah. I don't want to think about a week or a day or a moment or a second, Sister Diane, knowing that God has changed and there I am in all of the elements of life. Can I get an amen? And life just doesn't sometimes seem fair. Have you been there? Have you been there? Come on. Have you been there? I mean, the last two months seems like... Woo! Last two years. Amen. But God hasn't changed. Maybe it's God trying to push us and draw us and speak to us and say, come on, get a little bit closer. Amen? Get a little bit closer. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place. And God help us tonight to find that secret place. It doesn't have to be your closet. It's that, that place that you have with God and you set aside with God and you know that's where you can be alone with God and that's where you know that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. When we know that God is our shepherd, there's nothing that we want. Why? Because there's nothing that can fulfill us nor suffice to us nor bring any enjoyment to us in this world but God. Amen. 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 In the darkest times, in the darkest of the moments. Amen. Amen. And David wrote in, in Psalms 23, he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. In other words, he said, I'm walking through some dark times. And in those days, it was always that the shepherd always would lead the sheep back before it got dark. But if it got dark before they got back to where he was going, he would always get in the middle of the sheep and he would make a whistle or he would talk and they knew his voice. Remember what Jesus said? My sheep. My sheep. Come on, help me out here, church. My sheep know my voice and I know they won't. They will not follow. And so that shepherd would get in the middle of them in that darkest time, in that darkest moment. And church, we're all going to experience that. And we're all experiencing it. Can I get an amen? amen. But God is still with us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Think about it. In our darkest hour. The great shepherd is in. And he's speaking. Can you imagine Jacob run in there and get me one of my one of those uh, don't get Aaron's rod, the one that's got the flag gate, just grab one of those others. I'm a, don't get the hot shot because Sydney probably don't need to be shot here today. <laughs> And here's the shepherd. It's done gotten dark. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's gotten dark in his, in his darkest time. And David's in his darkest times. And he's writing, the Lord is my shepherd. Because David knew what it was when he was out in the field. And he was with his sheep. The lion came, James, and what did David do? He rose up and he protected those sheep. The lion didn't get a one of them. The bear came, what did David do? He just spoke comfort to the sheep and David killed the bear barehanded. 
And I can just see David. Can't you just see David gathering and speaking to those sheep? He's alone. He's, he's about 13 or 14 years old, and he's on the backside, and his big brothers probably, they're, they're just having a good old time, but there's David in the darkest moments of his hour, but he knows that God is with him, church. And that's what God wants us to know tonight. We're going to go through dark times. Why not? We're going to suffer loss. We're going to suffer situations. We're going to suffer all kinds of things. But God is still with us, James. He's the chain breaker. Amen. 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 And there's David calling, speaking to the sheep so they won't get scared. And that's what David is saying. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me, thy rod. And some of them had hooks on their staff. And if a sheep began to stray, it would just reach out and gently pull it around its neck and bring it back. Can I get an amen? And I wonder tonight, how many God... How many of us here tonight that God has been reaching out trying to bring us back in line with him and let him know, let us know that, Sister Francis, that he's with us. He's never left us. He's never forsaken us. And he is always there. And he's the God that will always be there. And that we trust in him and we become unmovable, unchangeable because that God is a God that doesn't change. He's still the same yesterday, today, and and forever, whatever he did yesterday, he can do today, church. Amen. Give him praise and glory. Amen. Jesus Christ the same yesterday. Whatever happened yesterday, it's over. It's gone. Today is almost over, but here we sit. But we can have that comfort and that peace of mind. Think, peace. What's that song? The only real peace I know. What's some of the words you know? Shouldn't ask you, you want to do. I just played it the other day. My candy. Peace. My candy. Have you? The only real peace I know is through you, Lord. That I have in you is your Lord. The only real peace I have is in you, dear Lord. Only, only real peace. Wow. And there's David out, out walking in the shadow of death. He's in the valley. He's been through things. He's been through situations. And he says, I will fear no evil. Why? Because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. Why? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Why? Because there's nothing that can separate me from the love of God. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. Then he said, Paul said, I'm more than a conqueror. More? Yes. More than a conqueror through who? Christ. Him. That loved me. Right. Amen. 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 So tell yourself, I'm more than a conqueror. I don't have to be defeated. I don't have to be in a losing battle. I'm in a winning battle. Let me tell you, I might limp, but I'm still in a winning battle. Yes. Want to know why? Because my Lord Jesus Christ, Sister Jovita, has never lost a battle. Amen. All through the Bible, you never see where God lost a battle. Only when man tried to do it himself is when we lose the battle. Can I get an amen? that we carry everything to God in prayer and we just release it into his hands and the Bible says you have not because you ask not. Amen. Amen. 
So if we ask him, and he said, anything I ask in the name of Jesus, he said, my father will do it for you. And believe it. Just believe it. What did a man with a lunatic son say? Here's what he said to Jesus. If thou canst do anything, do it. Jesus said, if thou canst believe. Although all things are possible to those that believe. Yes. And then the man realized there was unbelief in his heart. In church, there's times that there's unbelief around. Anytime there's faith going on, anytime that God is moving, there's always doubt looming around. Right. And unbelief. But that's where we have to remain steadfast in our faith in God, knowing that God is who He says He is. He says He changes not. He says that He is the Lord God, and there's none other like Him. Can I get an amen? amen. Jesus said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can I get a witness in here? And we've witnessed, and we've seen, and we've felt the touch of God in our hearts, and our souls, and our spirits. And we've seen the hand of God on our families. And the reason our families are not dead right now is because we've been praying for them. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And you might say, well, I've been praying for my family and they're getting nothing but worse. Just hold on. It's not over. It's not over. If you don't believe me, ask my wife over there. We prayed for our son. The more we prayed, the worse he got. And the more we prayed, the worse he got. Hello? But then one day, one day, he calls his mama and says, Mama, I want to be saved. I want to come home. Can I get a witness in here? And guess what? He's never been the same since. God changed his heart. And God can do that for us. He can do it for our families. He can do it for our children, our grandchildren. He can do it for our great-grandchildren. He can do it no matter how bad they are. And I want you all to pray tonight for my part. Yes, amen. I had a good talk with him today. I invited him to church. I told him, I said, Michael, you know if God can change somebody like me. And I said, you know how I was. He can change you. He hung his head. Yes. And then I told him, I said, your sister Chrissy was a diamond. She always had the church praying for you, and those prayers are still going. Amen. And before I left him, he said, I might surprise you one day. I said, well, come on. Because God is able. Amen. You know what happened? There's a seed planted. Yes. So would you just lift your voice and say, Lord, save my heart all right now. Change his heart. He's not in good health. He needs healing, but he needs healing of a soul. Amen. And I believe God will honor Chrissy Williams' prayer that she prayed for him all those years. That God will save him before it's too late. Amen. So David says, Yea, though I. And let me tell you. It seems like a lot of times that it's nobody but you in that shadow, in that darkest hour. Sometimes it feels like being that nobody else is going through anything. Sometimes it feels like it's just you and you're all alone and it feels like God ain't nowhere to be found. You ever been to that place? Yeah. Hold on, because he's carried. Yeah. The footprints in the sand, you ever seen that? Yeah. You want to, want to know why there ended up only one set of footprints? That's when Jesus was carrying them. And tonight, the shepherd, our great shepherd tonight, the Lord God Jehovah, he's carrying us in his arms, and he's telling us, don't worry, 
Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, don't fear no evil. Yes. Thank you. I want to tell you something, church. Satan can't do anything that God does not allow. God can stop anything. And sometimes God is just trying to herd the sheep closer to him. He's reaching out. He pulled it. Pulling us closer. Closer because he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. I'm going to have you going back and forth, Tyler. I know we probably got technology somewhere that you can have two scriptures at one time. Have they got that technology? It's expensive. My God's a rich God. So. Yes. <laughs> he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow, under the shadow. You ever been out in the sun it's real hot? Yes. yes. And you walk under the shade of a tree, under the shadow of that tree, it almost feels like 20 degrees difference. But when you walk under that shadow of the Almighty, that tells the devil, <coughs> you can't get to this. It's like that mama hen. She got them little chicks. And she's in the coop on the way on the other side. All of a sudden, something makes a noise. Something gets after them baby chicks. And she starts making a noise. And them baby chicks, they know their mother's voice. And she starts cackling and flopping those wings. And they run as fast as they can. And she spreads those wings and opens them up. And they get under the shadow of that, and she sits there. And if it's a human, if you don't want to be flogged to death, your eyes be pecked out, leave them alone. Because it's their protection, and that's what God is saying. You, get, you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, it's protection. God can protect us. Go to the next verse, Tyler. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. What, what Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not <clears throat> unto thine own understanding. Our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts is not his thoughts. Our ways, our thoughts, our understanding sometimes is selfish, self-centered, corrupt. Hello? Right. Thinking only about me, me, me. Just look at yourself and say, me, 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 me. me, 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 me. But he said, trust me. I've relied on that scripture for 42 years, church. 42 years, James. I've remembered that scripture. And when I, you go through things, when you're dealing with issues and you're dealing with problems, and you don't know where the next meal come from, just trust in the Lord. When there's no popcorn and no rice in the house, and you got two babies coming home, and they're gonna be hungry from coming from school, and you you get in the middle of your floor and you pray and ask God. In forty-five minutes, church. Forty-five minutes later, Wanda, there was a knock on the door, and a neighbor. That when I was not saved, I cussed him. I threatened him. I done everything under the sun to that man. But guess who God sent to my rescue? And he said, 
I just thought, I felt, me and my wife, that y'all might have need of this. And you know, pride wants to take over and say, oh no, we don't. But I was hungry and I seen arse potatoes. <laughs> I know y'all have never heard it called that. And those three bags of groceries lasted longer than any that we had ever had. Like they just kept multiplying. I'm not telling you just something I read out of somebody's book, somebody else's experience. I'm telling you tonight, James, by my own experience that there was nothing in the house to eat. Now, my brother lived two houses up, and I could have went to their house and told them, and they would have flooded our cabin, cabinets. I could have called the pastor and told him, but I was learning how to trust God. Amen. To just trust him. And if we trust him, Benny, he always comes through. Amen. It may not happen in 45 minutes. I'm still waiting and believing God for some things. Just because they have not come to fruition or has not materialized doesn't mean that I don't trust him anymore. I just thank you. Lord, I thank you that you've already heard my prayer. Amen. Lord, I thank you that you've already saved my heart. Lord, I thank you that you've already saved this whole city. Lord, I thank you that you've had your hand upon our church family. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Lord, I just thank you because you're God. And I trust you. We trust the banks that when we put our money in the bank that they're going to keep it for us. Amen. But you know if they went belly up tonight, <clears throat> there's a good chance you won't get your money. Yes. Amen. Hello. Amen. That's the reason Grandpa, Jart, my granddaddy and Mama Ed and all them, that's the reason they didn't put their money in the bank. Under the mattress, but they they dug holes and buried. There are probably some still buried somewhere, James. I should have bought that eight acres and just went out there with a backhoe digging that whole place up. But you can put your trust in God. Huh? He buried his and can't get him where he put it. You need help finding it? <laughs> Come help it. <coughs> but you just trust God? No matter what. <coughs> Not just with the little things, such as food. He said, take no thought for tomorrow. Amen. Amen. He said, the sparrows, they're not worried. Every day, Wapo feed over here, they, they drop food, grain. Guess who comes and eats it? The birds. And they eat their field, fly out, figuring it'll be here tomorrow. If not, we'll find a worm somewhere. So God just, he just plainly says, if you're trust, trust with your whole heart. Go to the next verse, Tom. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth shall be 
thy shield, thy bow. He's got us covered, church. Go back to Psalms 23, Tyler. Start with verse 1. This has always been my favorite psalm. Psalm 23. Short book, six verses, but it's power packed. It's powerful. And if we listen to it and let the Spirit of God speak to us as we read it and we go over it, and I would challenge you to just go over it this week and just let the Spirit of God just speak to you and allow Him just to melt your heart and calm your fears and remove any darkness that might be in your life. So David just says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He might maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And David knew what it was like. He would carry those sheep out into the greenest pastures. And then he would carry them and lead them down to the still waters. And let them to drink. <laughs> David knew their needs. God knows our needs and our wants. Amen. What is the word of God says? But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. He didn't say nothing about our wants, but he said our needs. Our greatest, listen church, our greatest need is to be more spiritual. The more spiritual, the more closer we become to God and get to God, the less that we'll think about frivolous things. I know that we still have to live in this world, but we don't have to be attached to it. We don't have to allow it to control us and to dictate our life. I'd rather allow the shepherd to just lead me and guide me. And he says he will do that in Proverbs 3 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways. And he shall direct. Amen. He will direct our past. And if he sees we're getting in danger, he'll gently nudge us to get us back in line with him because he knows, God knows where we need to be. And I believe tonight if we all would just, if we would all be honest, I'm not where I want to be with God. Because I realize there's so much more of God that I haven't experienced. Amen. That we've only scratched the surface. Thank God for salvation. Thank God for saving grace. Thank God for mercy. But God has so much more for us, church. That's where we just have to put all of our trust in the Lord. But there's another song. Trust and obey. Yes. Trust and obey. So just, just trust. And all those sheep that David was, they learned to trust him. They learned that he was going to carry them to the green pastures. They learned that he would lead them to the waters and they would be still waters. But even after that, there was always some that was trying to stray away. And David would just go and put that staff around them and bring them back. Or in those days, shepherds, they carried a slingshot. 
And what they did with the rocks, they would get so good at it, they would swing that rock and it would come down in front of that sheep and just clip his nose. And it, what it done, it would turn that sheep around. I got some rocks. Who wants to stand back here and see if I can clip your nose? <laughs> you want to be the first one, Lou? Now you got to be good to do that. And when it came down and it clipped the front of their nose, they knew they would strayed too far. They knew they were being called back by the shepherd and they would turn around and join the other flock. That's the reason, church, we can't live out there on our own. We've got to stay with the flock. Amen. We've got to stay with God. There's safety in numbers. Yes, Can I get a witness in there? Amen. I believe that's the reason Paul said not the forsaking of the assembling of ourselves together. Amen. You've heard me preach it. I've preached it all my life that the church can't save you. Only God can save you. But there's there's safety when in, when you come into the house of God. There's safety when we come into the ark of God. The tabernacle of God. There's safety. You might be going through a dismal time, but you come in and Sydney is bubbling over. Why? Because he's been close to the shepherd and he's been trusting the shepherd. And that that excitement, that will rub off on you and it will bubble up and pour out on you. Why? Because the anointing is tangible. Can I get an amen? amen. And when we get close to the Lord, have, have you ever, I don't, have you ever just got in got close to somebody that you just knew that they're just close to the Lord you just feel the presence of God amen, amen. Lord throw every rock you got it to if you got to skin my nose skin my nose amen everybody say Lord don't let me stray let me be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. In church, there is work to be done. There's other sheep that has wandered way off. What did Jesus say? To leave the 99 and go after that one. And there would be times you would see shepherds carrying a lamb or a sheep around his neck. To keep it from straying. And sometimes they would break their legs to keep them from wandering. No wonder Benio has so many calamities. I was wondering, the Lord breaking my legs, and I just wouldn't give in. And we've all experienced it. Amen. 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 But aren't you glad tonight that you're in the flock of God? Yes. Aren't you glad that you're in that herd of God, that, that peace of God that passeth all understanding? Yes. It is just, it's it's inexplainable. I, I can't explain to it. I can't put it in words enough to explain how wonderful it is that that peace, peace of God when you're going through hell on earth. When you're facing dilemmas, you're facing the doctor's report, when you're facing all these tragedies, all these things, but then there's that peace, wonderful peace that comes from the Father above. I don't deserve it. But that peace that passeth all understanding and that peace gets you through another night. It helps you to go through the night in peace and rest in peace. 
Is that not what we need tonight, church? That we just need, we need to gather. You got, a, you got somebody give us something that says, gather. Just gather. I bought it for you. <laughs> yeah. I thought somebody gave it to you. I guess I did. I forgot. I bought so many things. But just gather. Just look at your neighbor and say, gather. Yeah. Yeah. When you gather with your family, Amen. You gather with your family. You need to let them know how you feel. That you really love them. Because you never know. Amen. We here here we are. Especially me and Kate. I'm on we ain't got but a few men here, so we're outnumbered tonight anyway. We, we think that we're invincible and, and that men don't cry. Ever who told you that is a liar. But we think, you know I love you anyway, so. Amen. But sometimes people just want to hear. Amen. Just look at the person next to you and just say, I love you. No, I really love you. Amen. Love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. We just take it for granted. But when, what happens is when, when they're gone, then we really... I wish I'd have said this. And then I found myself, I found myself, I was going to call Tommy. And then I found a, a truck. Because he almost, almost every Saturday, well, I've seen this one. And I tell him, well, go buy it. I said, you're just looking, you ain't wanting to buy it. I said, if you want to buy it, I got two of them, black one. You, you need one to go with your wife. <laughs> he called me from Alabama when y'all went to Alabama. I've been looking. Ain't nobody got trucks up here. I said, I know, Tommy. I look every time I go. I go all the way up to Tennessee, everywhere to, to look. But you don't realize it till they're not there. Amen. You see, we get so caught up with our own issues and our own problems that we don't realize and we don't see when people stray off. Amen. And they may even have, the Lord may have even broke their leg and they're, they're still, but they strayed off. But you see, he's a loving God and he'll, he'll, he'll pull you back. Amen. God will get you one way or another. That's sin. About falling out of the back of a church. He'll get you. He'll get you flat on your back. But he's our shepherd. He leads us beside the still waters. Go to the next verse. Verse 3. He restoreth. Wow. He restoreth my soul. What do you tell the children of Israel in the in book of Joel, 2nd chapter, 21st? fifth verse, he said, I will restore what the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm and the grasshopper, what they have eaten. 
In other words, one came in and devoured, another came and devoured what that one left, and it was just an ongoing thing that they devoured everything, but God said, I will restore. Right. Amen. And I believe that God is about to restore some things yes. to you that has been stolen, killed, Amen. and it looked like it's destroyed, but it's not. Amen. Because God, because God can take things and bring them back as they were or even better. Amen. How many wants just to re say, Lord, restore my soul? Lord, Not just where I was spiritually, Lord, but I want to go beyond that. I want to go beyond that spiritual wall. I want to go beyond what I had, Lord. Just restore my soul. Renew me. Refresh me tonight, Lord. And God is restoring, and he's going to restore. Sister Beavis, get Joel 2 and 25. I believe that's where it's at. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. What does Jesus say in the Beatitudes? He that hungers, blessed is he that hunger and thirst after my righteousness, for they shall be filled. Field. We're sitting at Thanksgiving table and we've eaten. They asked you, you want anything else? No, I'm so full. I couldn't hold another bite. Well, I got some peach cobbler with ice cream. I believe I'll take a little bit. We say we're full, but we're not. Amen. Or one of them pig picking cakes that my wife's mother fixes. Or pecan pie. Or blackberry, blackberry coffee. That's good. I mean, got, got them little strips of, uh, what do you call it? The dough crust. I mean, them little strips that's laying across look like they weaved in and out like a basket. And got that sugar and butter on top of it, Jane. And it just come up out of the oven. <laughs> and you got you some homemade biscuit. Don't need a biscuit, but it's good to soften that <coughs> juice. And you take that up and you begin to eat that, put some butter on it. Make your tongue slap your brains out. <laughs> That's why we need to be on a diet. <laughs> but everybody's on a diet, right? We say we're full, but we're not. Amen. Did you find that scripture? 2.25. I will restore. Can you read it? Yes. <laughs> okay. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts... Wait, ate. wait. The what? The years that the locusts... Say, say it real loud. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. Now I want you to I want you to receive that in the name of Jesus and just say, Lord, I receive this word tonight. That all the years that the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. I believe in tonight for restoration. And restoration. And reconciliation. And reconciliation. And, and wow. Yeah. Wow. Read, read the whole thing over. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Read that 25th 
adversity. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. Put, put that on the screen, Scott. I just want everybody to see it. Because I, I just feel a, a change in the spirit, just a restoration and reconciliation. Restore the years. Years, everybody say years. Years. It's not the last two years, but Lord, all the years. All the years that's been devastated in your life. God says, I will. I will restore to you. And God is speaking to you tonight, church. He's speaking to us as a corporate body of Christ and as individuals in sitting in this building. Because we've all had something that has been snatched away, torn away, stolen from us. Amen. Whether it be spiritual, physical, or financial, or emotionally. And can I just say this? Everywhere you turn, people's emotions are just running away. Yes, I mean, a lot of people is just an emotional wreck. Yes, That's where that peace of God comes back into. And God says, Jovita, I will. When you quote this and you speak this, it serves notice to the devil. You come to steal, kill, and destroy, but my Lord, my shepherd, my great shepherd will restore because he said, it'd do you good just to stand right now if you could. If you can stand up just to quote that scripture and say, my Lord said, I will, I will restore to you the years. Now I say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I receive that in my heart, in my spirit. Do whatever you need to do to my heart first and begin restoration, reconciliation. I'm restoring all the years that has been stored in Jesus. You can be seated if you can. I'm going to challenge you to write that down, or if you've got a computer, you can go on and copy it off, but put it throughout your house, put it where you can see it, that you, you will see it there, and you'll know it's there, and you'll read it, and you'll get that in your spirit, it'll just, it'll just permeate in your spirit, and it will just bring it peace, they bring trust and it brings faith that God says, I will. At this time, Israel had been through all kind of things and the reason they've been through all kind of things is because they turned their back on God but God says, I'm going to restore now. Amen. I'm going to step in. Yeah. Well, somebody just, right where you're sitting, just make a step like you said it. He's, God said, I'm going to step in this situation. Yes. Amen. When I show up, ain't nothing can stop me. I will. I will bring restoration. I'll bring reconciliation. For all of those years, God said, I'll do it. Just make a list of those things. This week, the rest of the week, make a list of those things that you know you want to see restored. You want to see reconciliation. Spiritually. Amen? Amen. Amen. Then physically. 
then financially. For the devil stolen from us financially. Hello. And emotionally. People just like you. I mean, but the peace of God just quiets your spirit. It's like that mother hen just comes in and hovers over those baby chicks and she just squats down and they come under that peace of God. Just yeah. Yeah. They come under that covering of their mother and we come under the covering, Lewis, of our heavenly father and he just says, everything's going to be alright. Yeah. And you just feel that peace. That same peace that God showed up and woke you up early in the morning and told you he had everything. Everything was going to be alright with your wife. Look at it. Say, you all right, honey? <laughs> now you owe me a dollar for him calling you honey. <laughs> now it's just. But God woke him up. He had been serving God long. But God, Jehovah, cared enough about him, knew he was worried, and he was afraid. God just says, I got this. I got this. So here we say, God's still got it. Just hold your hands out and say, God's got it. He got the whole world in his hands. He's got me and you, brother, and sister. He got the little bitty baby in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. God's such a big God, he can hold this whole world. And 69, 389 billion people can be praying at one time, and God says, I got that, Virginia. It's on the way. And you hear Eloise speaking in Spanish, Amen. praying in Spanish. And he says, I got that. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. Then he hears Benny just stumbling through a prayer and he says, Benny, I got it. And he hears me, I don't know what to pray for. I don't know. You ever got that in that way? I don't know what to ask for. I don't know. Lord, I don't know. I just, Jesus help me. He says, I got it. I got it. So don't forget, write this down, write it. If you write it down, then you're more than likely going to read it throughout the week. Because if you rely on your memory to go into the Bible, you're probably, we have leaky uh, vessels up here that leaks out stuff. And we forget. Then we tie a string around the finger, then we forget why we got it. Straight around the Amen. Oh no, we got any blackberries? I, I want some. You got time to make a homemade blackberry pie tonight? Top it. My wife looking at me. What? What's that thing that your 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 mom makes? Them little blackberry. Oh, the little blackberry cheesecake thing. What was that? The pastry thing or the little blackberry cheesecake? Little blackberry it was cheesecake. in a little container yeah, about like that. Blackberry cheesecake thing we made. Lower cheese. Now, I only got one of them. And I said, there's not no more? I wish you would have said something because we had a bunch left over. What? Remember when we did that? Yeah, I couldn't pass them out. So enough people don't tell me. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> nah, 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 I don't want to hear it. If you didn't get one, you don't know what you missed. But if you don't have the Father, you don't know what you missed. Amen. If you don't have the peace of God, you don't know what you missed. Amen. Two things. One is we need to pray for Sister Kathy. Got, uh, message got sent to her. 
And number two, there's been a birthday in the house. Sister Mildred, I hear, has had a birthday. So we yeah. can sing happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. She's turning 49. <laughs> so, lead us out. This is Deborah. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday. Because the Lord is our shepherd. Amen. 
Amen. And Father, on that note, we just ask you to bless tonight. That you would touch and you would just speak to the hearts and the lives of the people here. Those that are not here, Lord, lift them up and strengthen them and touch them. And Lord, we pray for this city. We pray for this county. Lord, that you'd send revival. I pray for every church and every pastor, Lord, that you'd send a move of God in their churches, Lord. And we'll give you the praise and the glory. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Would you give him a hand clap of praise? Amen. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Don't forget Sunday morning, 1030. We'll be here ready to worship the Lord and praise him. Yes. And need to lift Scott and Billy and their family up. We have another sister going home to be with the Lord. Amen. She's not sick anymore. Faithful servant of God. She'll be missed. Yeah, they done got a hot dog party going on. Yeah. Yeah, they're probably getting up a petition saying, can't we do something to this? Can't we just put him over there in the corner somewhere? <laughs> yeah, he'll be wanting to blow that off. If Gabriel lays it down, he'll be over there blowing it. I just see him going over there and doing that thing that he used to do. Just <sighs> You ever see him do it? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I think the funeral is going to be next Thursday. Be viewing at 10, funeral at 11. It'll be here in the church sanctuary. So that's next week. Be praying, praying for everybody involved. We're going to believe God. Amen. Everybody just lift your hand. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we know that you're the healer. You're the one that can restore this need. God, we know you use doctors. God, we know that you can just completely heal in the name of Jesus. We ask you to do a miracle, Lord, and we give you praise and glory for it. Lord, as they just walk in peace. In Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen. All right, let's all stand. There's my amen corner. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't forget your scripture. Write it down. Read it all week. We'll see you Sunday morning.